So we continue with the next talk. Uh, what's new in GStreamer? So a very generic talk on on what's going on there by Tim Philip Muller. Hi everybody. Um, thanks for coming. Let's talk about GStreamer. I've got way too many slides, so um, I'll you know be very quick. It's going to be a very high level talk, um, and there'll be more talks. There's another talk by Olivier later, and then another GStreamer talk afterwards. Quick introduction, who am I? Um, I've been hacking on GStreamer for a while. I, oh, there's a slide missing. Um, anyway, I'm Tim Miller. Um, I'm one of the main GStreamer uh, maintainers and developers. I've been doing this for 10 years, and I work for Centricula um, to help customers with GStreamer. Um, what is GStreamer? Um, just in case you're coming in to, to have a peek. Um, basically, it's a general framework for multimedia processing. We're trying to provide building blocks um, that you can combine um, you know, for reading, uh, for streaming, downloading, encoding, decoding, muxing, RTP payloading, etc. And you can combine these freely to do whatever you want with your media flows, basically. Um, we aim to be cross-platform. So, um, you know, Windows, Android, iOS, um, Linux, of course, embedded systems. We, um, want to, we are toolkit agnostics. We use glib, um, but, you know, we, we also use Qt and have integration for everything you want, really. Um, we don't tie you down for anything. Um, we want to support all and any use cases, from editing to streaming to playback to recording. Um, and it's a set of libraries that we provide and plugins and then you can write stuff on top. We provide a very abstract and very flexible API that allows you to do hopefully everything. And uh, we don't reinvent everything from scratch, but we, um, we build on other libraries and other components, of course. Um, we have a low-level API to give you full control. We've got some high-level convenience API for things like playback and coding and uh, video editing and stuff like that. Um, we have an RTSP server library that lets you easily stream stuff over RTSP, all these kind of stuff. And um, we don't try to uh, make unreasonable assumptions, so you can um, use it everywhere. You can integrate it in your browser, you can uh, use it in OpenGL applications, you know, whatever you want, you should be able to use GStreamer with it. <coughs> all right, so what have we been up to? Uh, releases, uh, the last release has been um, some time, it was 1.12 in um, May, that's our current stable release. We were aiming for a six month cycle, but um, decided to delay the um, upcoming one for a little bit. So 1.14 is gonna come out really soon now, basically we're gonna probably make pre-releases pre next week, um, and hopefully later this month or early next month we'll have 1.14 out. That's our next uh, stable feature release, basically. Um, so what has landed, what's interesting possibly, uh, we have video conversion and video scaling uh, can now, it's now multi-threaded, so if you've got high resolution content, you can just spread it over your course very nicely. Um, <coughs> timed uh, text markup language, TTML, um, there's a new plugin for that. Um, this is quite nice, it's a, it's a new standard. Um, and it has the potential to, to describe text um, subtitles in general and text markup, so um, I'm quite excited about that. So we have a plugin for that. It's not enabled for auto-plugging yet. Um, you have to set an environment variable, um, but yeah. And it supports the basic uh, profile at least. Split mark sync. Split mark sync is, uh, is something that fragments your media stream, so you can say, well, you know, sp split my, uh, create a new uh, file every so and so many megabytes or gigabytes or so and so many seconds, minutes, hours, whatever, and it just takes your encoded streams and it will split it. And it works with any container, even those you know that don't support that natively. So you can just decide Matroska, MP4, whatever you want, um, and it'll just work. So that, that has been rewritten to be more um, deterministic now. So, um, and it should be more stable. And there's a new uh, format location full signal, which allows you to get the first buffer of a new fragment when it starts, so you can then read the metadata on it and get you know, timestamps and any other information from it to, you know, if you want to have special file names or do something um, in response to that. A dash, a dash trick mode playback, that also landed. Um, that's that's quite, quite some work. It's not entirely uh, trivial because you need to uh, you know, stay within the envelope of the bandwidth. I mean, 
you know, you don't have infinite download bandwidth, so you need to skip keyframes, you need to find out where the keyframes are, you need to skip segments, you need to, um, you need to sort of, you know, figure out how, how can you utilize full bandwidth, but not more, and still squeeze as many frames out of it as possible. So um, that landed. Um, that works quite nicely with certain dash streams. Um, we have loads of uh, new features and performance improvements on Embedded, which I'm not going to talk about. Uh, your video for Linux, uh, OMX, DMA bar, zero copy, all that stuff. Uh, Olivier has a talk right after this one, and he's going to tell you everything about it. So I'm just going to skip all that. Um, hardware accelerated video encoding and decoding. We have lots of that, of course. Um, we have a new MSDK plugin for Intel's Media SDK, which provides um, yeah, video encoding and decoding on Intel hardware. Um, that works on Linux as well as on Windows. Um, there's GStreamer VARPI, which exists already. Um, that is based on an open source stack, but that only works on Linux. And that also has seen loads of new features and fixes, and the encoders are now auto-plugged, so they work quite nicely. We have a new NVDEC plugin, which is for the um, NVIDIA uh, gra graphics stack, basically. And um, we, al we already had an encoder for that, which has a new f few new features. Um, yeah, what else? What's coming up? Um, something that just landed is the AOMedia AV1 support. Um, AV1 is basically the next generation video codec, um, hopefully better than H.265, and it's going to be royalty free and it's an open standard. And uh, Tim Terryberry is going to talk about it at 5 p.m. later today. But I'm really excited about that. It's basically, you know, once, once we have that, and it's going to be widely deployed, it's going to be widely supported. Apple just um, joined the foundation, so um, AO Media. So um, it's just going to work. So at that point, we will have um, cutting edge audio codec, Opus, and a video codec, hopefully. So that's going to be great. Um, and we can ditch all the MPEG nonsense. Um, the codec is still experimental. I think the bitstream might be either just has been stabilized or might be about to be stabilized. Um, go to Tim's talk. The encoding is still very, very slow, but we have the integration, so you can start playing with it if you like. Um, there's a new plugin called IPC Pipeline, which allows you basically to split GStreamer pipelines over multiple processes. And again, Olivier is going to talk about all that in his talk. Um, we have something called a ring buffer for debug logs. The thing is, we, I mean, we, have, we, we log like, if you enable debugging in GStreamer, we log so much stuff. I mean, you can easily accumulate hundreds of megabytes and gigabytes of debug logs. But, you know, sometimes people have problems. They're like, well, you know, after three days of streaming, I run into this error, and then you can't just really um, make a debug log. So we now have a ring buffer for the debug logs, and when you find a problem, you can just grab the last, you know, megabytes out of it. Um, that's quite nice. It's really simple to do, but, you know, no one has actually done it, so. Um, we have a tracing framework, and that has seen quite a few improvements, and we have a leak tracer in particular. Um, that, I mean, that works on embedded systems as well, so it doesn't have the, you know, that grind is nice on the desktop, but if you have something that has much less overhead, that's much uh, nicer. So leak tracer, they ca it can uh, do stack tracers, of course. Um, we can do snapshotting now. It can give Um, figure out better where actually latency in your pipeline comes from without, you know, digging through the debug logs in too much detail. HLS Sync 2, we had HLS Sync. Uh, you feed it an MPEG TS stream, which is not always convenient. HLS Sync 2, uh, basically, you feed it elementary stream, so you give it an encoded video stream and an encoded audio stream, and it will do the splitting and muxing for you. It will use split mux sync internally, but it, it will work much nicer with content that is already encoded. HLS sync kind of re relies on an encoder up front, so it can force keyframes at the boundaries. Um, HLS sync will work without that, so that's nicer. Um, if that's the use case you need. RTSP, we have an RTSP server library and a client, of course, so you can easily stream, you know, streams of RTSP um, with very little effort, and it's used in security cameras and whatnot. Um, RTSP2 support has just landed. Um, and I believe we might be the first one to implement that. 
Um, and there's also Onwith Audio Back Channel, which is a horrible extension to the standard to allow you to um, basically send audio back over a playback RTSP connection. That's coming up soon. Um, in general, we have a mission to, we, uh, we have our plugins split into multiple modules. And, well, they're called uh, base, good, ugly, bad. And people don't like, you know, bad. They see GC plugins bad. It's kind of an inside joke, but they're kind of worried. And we're not really putting enough effort into moving things from bad into good or base. So we're kind of trying to change that and consolidating that. And usually we add new stuff in bad until the API is stable and we, are, you know, we like it, and then we move it over. But we just don't, you know, haven't been good enough about that. So we're making an effort to move more stuff into our core modules. Um, so the good thing is MP3 patterns have expired, which means we can move MP3 decoders and encoders, um, and MP2 encoder as well. We can move that into good, and we've done that, which is nice. Um, AC3 patterns have also expired. Unfortunately, we can't move the uh, decoder because um, it's GPL license, and we don't do GPL in our core, um, in our good modules, basically. Um, what else? Uh, we, have, we have a new bunch of sort of mixers, audio mixer um, and compositor for video. Um, is based on a new aggregator base class, and what it does is it handles live streams properly, so you can actually have you know, defined latency um, for, for the mixer. So basically, if, if one of your input streams drops out because someone put it on a network cable, you still want your pipeline to not jam up, but continue running, right? So we made a new base class for that. The old base class didn't handle that really nicely. So we have made a new base class for that that works quite nicely. We moved that into core now, and we will hopefully move the audio specific one as well, um, and then hopefully the video one soon after. And we can start porting muxes to the new base class. FLV Max has already been ported, um, and the other ones as well. So at that point, you know, you will have a much nicer experience for, for making live pipelines that don't jam up. Um, our OpenGL integration library and plugins has moved into base as well. It was in bad, so now we can build on that, and the API is stable now. So really, we're quite happy with that as well. Um, then WebRTC. WebRTC is very nice. Um, if you don't know what it is, think of it as Skype in your browser. How do I stream stuff to my browser? And you know, the answer is always, well, it's not so easy, right? I mean, you have, it depends what operating systems, it depends what browsers, what browser versions you want to support, what, uh, you know, codecs you can support, and it's it's a mess, really. I mean, you might get away with sort of you know Dash and HLS in most cases, but it's yeah, it's not so easy. But WebRTC, I mean, uh, you know, of course, it, it has different advantages and disadvantages. Um, because you know, adaptive streaming, HLS Dash is made to be scalable, but um, but still, I mean, WebRTC, I think it's going to be big because it's going to work everywhere. Um, it's going to work in, in most recent browsers sooner or later. So we basically have now, yesterday, we merged uh, the GStreamer WebRTC plugin and library into GST plugins bad. It just landed. It uses libnice uh, for ICE stuff to get you know, through firewalls and NAT, etc. cetera. Um, and if you're interested in that, Nibik has just written a blog post about it. And we also have a a demo repository, which might be a bit, little bit, bit rotten, but um, it should work. So that, that's really nice because um, it will, I mean, it basically allows you to easily leverage um, WebRTC and stream to WebRTC clients using GStreamer, um, anything GStreamer, and you can leverage all of GStreamer. There were existing efforts. Uh, one was OpenWebRTC, sponsored by Ericsson. That's kind of dead now. And the reason that wasn't really continued is that the, you know, it, it, well, let's say there was a mismatch from what we as library developers, <laughs> C developers need from an API. It was just you know, easier to do a new one. Corento also had, has something about that, but it's more like media server focused. Um, it's a very rich framework. I don't know if that is much developed. It might, it might just be picking up again. Um, and there were some proprietary solutions, but we're open source guys, so we want our stuff open source, and we really want it in GStreamer. 
Um, then you have libwebrgc from Google, of course. That's like the, the thing everyone uses, more or less. But I don't know if anyone has used it, but it's horrible. It's really horrible. I mean, this is so painful. I mean, it, it works, but it's very limited. If you want to do advanced stuff, you have to fork it. I mean, just building it um, seems to be a problem. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so I mean, you know, WebRTC bin, our new GStreamer thing. It's very flexible. You've got full control. Um, it more or less maps the existing APIs. So, I mean, you know, you have to learn uh, something new in that respect. The nice thing is you can leverage all the existing stuff in GStreamer, hardware encoders, decoders, zero copy capture rendering. You can make all that work. So it will work on embedded immediately. You can feed pre-encoded uh, pre contents, and you don't have to fork loop web RTC and maintain it and up, um, update it. it. I mean, it's not fully, fun I mean, you know, it's not super complete, but it's, it's used in production, so it works for what works. It works well. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't do ev everything yet. So renegotiation isn't fully supported. Uh, Receive-only streams don't work fully yet. But, you know, the, the internals map the spec really more or less, so you can easily see where the gaps are and just fill them in. So, you know, if you want to help with that, help is wanted. Um, we have performance optimizations more or less everywhere. There's so much stuff in the pipeline, but, you know, it doesn't really seem worth talking about in detail for the embedded part, see Olivier's talk. Um, SRT, Secure Reliable Transport, is a new thing, very much hyped and marketed, but it's also very nice. So um, there seems to be much support for it um, industry-wide. So it seems well-placed to replace RTMP, and we've um, just merged source and sync plugins for that, so you can stream if you like. Uh, Mason, our current build system is Auto Tools, but we're mov moving to Mason. Mason is basically, well, it takes the best parts of CMake and then, you know, improves upon that. Um, we didn't like CMake, so it's got a very nice maintainable description language. It's not Turing complete. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it still has a few things missing. Um, but for us, the main motivation was also that we have a Microsoft Visual Studio build, which works. Um, yeah, but there's still some work to be done. We, we're going to switch to Mason fully and drop all the tools, but it needs to be ready. The, we need to make it work everywhere. <coughs> Rust. Uh, Rust is awesome. Um, it's a new programming language, um, originally from Mozilla. It's basically C++ C++ we always wanted. The nice thing is it matches, uh, but you know, it's, it's uh, safe. It's a basically a system programming language, but it's safe, it's productive. Um, and it's more or less as fast as C and C++. Zero uh, cost abstractions. It's awesome. Um, we are not going to port this humor to Rust anytime soon. But, you know, we're playing with it. We're looking at it. It matches our memory model with ownership, et cetera, really, really well. They're in uh, excellent shape. They can be used in uh, production. Sebastian has a talk tomorrow at 11. Um, you should check it out. Our GStreamer C, -C, -C sharp bindings have also been rejuvenated, and they should be up to date now. What can we improve upon? Um, well, the usual things, of course. But um, one thing that's sort of a, a pet peeve of mine is I, I want to, you know, the adaptive streaming, our, the client side is really well supported, but the production side isn't as nicely supported. I mean, we have HLS Sync, but, you know, it's not really that nice to use. Um, so, I mean, RTSP server has been a massive success for us because it's so easy to use and it's so powerful, and it would be really nice if we had something similar for Dash and HLS. Um, yeah, so in general, writing simple servers should be easier, um, just like a sync element, and the same for an HTTP server element, you know. People like making little pipelines and just running GC launch and just, you know, serving their webcam. And, you know, they don't want to necessarily write some code. They, you know, sometimes they just want to use the library for a little use case um, and just, you know, make a pipeline, use a plugin, and that's all they need. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for the organizers, of course. And if you have any questions or comments, yes, we can. So I can pass the mic if you have any question. Don't be shy. 
No questions. Excellent. Ah, one question here. Um, not really about what's new now, but uh, any news of uh, SIP support in JStreamer? Session initiation protocol? Well, I mean, you, you can use it, I think, but I mean, there are, li there are libraries. Uh, sorry, Olivia, why don't you use it? So there's a library called Firestream, which yeah. is a JStreamer element that basically implements the media part that you need to support SIP that we uh, developed almost a decade ago now and that has been being used in production. It's used in Pigeon, it's used in Empathy. Uh, and, but it doesn't do the actual like SIP protocol part for that. You need a different library. There's a bunch of them. They're all terrible um, <laughs> because SIP is terrible. <laughs> Any other question? No? Well, There's thank one in the back. Oh, one in the back. I didn't see you. You're in the dark. <clears throat> Thanks for your talk. Uh, last year I was looking in how I could query the dimensions of the screen in GStreamer to get them back in the pipeline and uh, didn't manage, couldn't find it. What's the best way to get support, uh, to find support on the web? You mean uh, get GStreamer support? Yeah, like technical questions. Right. Um, well, which brings me to my last slide. So the best, I mean, the best way actually is if you find us on, on IRC, um, we are in the um, hash streamer channel on the Freenode network. That's the best way to just, you know, get questions answered quickly. Most developers <coughs> will be there during, you know, European daytime, uh, North American daytime. But we have some Australian people as well. But those are the busiest times. So that's the easiest way. Also, the uh, GStreamer develop mailing list, but it's fairly high volume. And yeah, I mean, people sort of answer when they have time, but skip it otherwise. So IRC is the best. Um, in general, follow us on Twitter. We also, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not high traffic, so, but blog posts, etc. that's where you find them. And we have a Hackfest coming up in spring and a conference at the end of the year in Edinburgh, probably. Dates to be confirmed. Anyway, thank you very much, and uh, Olivier is up next with GStreamer for Embedded.